How's everybody doing today? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, I'm trying to take just a couple minutes because I am about to open and take out some Angora fiber that I have re recently acquired. Um, I've never spun with Angora. Um, I, I don't really know what to expect. Uh, this is brand new territory for me. Um, I mean, it's spinning and I'm brand new to it, so everything is brand new territory for me and that's okay. Um, so I guess what I'm gonna start with is, I'm just gonna let you know, I got this from Settlers Grove, their French Angora, um, and the bunny's name is Marshmallow. Um, I got an ounce and I think it was like 11 bucks. They have an Etsy shop, uh, shipping was quick. You know, I don't have a lot of expectation for sure. I have not actually pulled this out of the bag yet. I have opened the bag and like kind of poked around with my finger, but I didn't want to take anything out until I was ready to take it out. Sorry, I think I just got home on my face. Pardon me. Um, so from what I understand, because it was shipped and packed a little bit that I need to let it air out for a little while, floof up. Um, and I do need to do some more, a little bit more research on how I want to do this. Um, I know it needs to be spun with a pretty, pretty high twist. Um, I, I am unsure as of yet if I want to blend it with some sort of fiber. And if I do, what kind of fiber I already have that I could do that with. Um, so, oh my gosh, that's... I mean, it's from a bunny, so it's gonna be soft. Um, now my understanding is that I don't actually really need to do any prep, that I could just spin from the cloud. Again, a technique I have not ever done. Um, now, oh my gosh, this is like really soft. <laughs> I don't even, all right, so. I'm pulling this out and trying to check staple length. It should be. So I guess they vary somewhere between one and three inches in staple length for the Angora wool. I guess it is considered a wool. Um, it's at least that's how I keep seeing it referred to as wool. Um, I, I don't know. So I mean, it's gonna be roughly as long as my finger. So I guess, so. Let me pull that out. That might be a little bit better. Gosh, it's like, whew, it's so fine. <laughs> I don't know. All right, I'm going to say it's roughly probably like that. Maybe, I don't know. But I'm going to let it sit here and foof up. I'm going to do some reading in my fleece and fiber source book. Um, do some watching of some videos and I'm hoping actually does this one have Angora in it? I'm hoping it does. I'm just have this assumption that it does but it might not actually have um okay it does perfect <laughs> <laughs> I'll get some information from this, some from other videos, and uh, I'll be back when I have made some form of decision of what I'm going to do, and maybe you can hang out with me while I do it. Um, I have some ideas for what I would like to, to, to knit up with the finished yarn, so we'll see if I can manage that. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the ride with me, and um, I'll see you soon. Bye. Hey guys, um, so... The Angora has been hanging out for the better part of a day, like letting it floof up if it can. Um, this is what I'm working with here. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know like what is the end <laughs> in which, I just don't know. Um, so I did try a little bit of uh, sampling this morning and I'm gonna show you this is just me spinning from the cloud. No like prep at all. It's basically just come out of the bag, been allowed to floof. And um, 
I'm doing this on my Lua S10 and it is on the second to smallest whorl because I was having a hell of a time having it on the smaller war, the smallest whorl. I don't know what the ratios are. Um, I just know that I need to put a good amount of twist into this and um, the smaller your whorl, the, sm the more twist you'll get and the faster treadling too, but I prefer to manage my tools rather than my body because once we get into the rhythm of things, it will, uh, you just, your body will revert back to what you normally do. And this is true of many, many things other than spinning and knitting and those various pursuits. So it is spinning fairly fine from the fold. I have to say I am not having a great success with drafting. Now, you know, the things that I've seen, you're gonna get lumpy bits if you're spinning from the cloud because it's just the nature of it. Um, I don't necessarily care about lumpy bits or perfection. They don't really bother me. I mean, maybe sometimes a little, but because this is an experiment, I'm not really, um, I don't know. I'm just kind of figuring it out and playing. See, that's a big old lump of stuff right there. And I could probably go back and draft it, double draft, but I'm okay. See, and like, like these things, I just don't know if these are like the ends, if, you know, it's like a big old clump of stuff. I don't know if it's just because it got folded over in the in the packaging and shipping or what you know like I just don't know these things um I don't know what to look for um something I did try this morning which I'm going to show you here in a little bit is doing a light carding on the fibers to avoid those little lumpy bits and that did seem to be successful for me um, I do not have large hand carters. I have a pair of very small student hand carters that I got off of Etsy um, several months ago. I've used them a couple times, but um, remember, I'm a beginner. Like, my technique sucks at a lot of things. <laughs> like, I'm doing a short forward draft. Because I, uh, see, maybe, you know what, these lumpy bits do bother me more than, than I think I care to admit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know what, I'm just gonna pull this off, wrap this up, and we're gonna do a little bit of carding to, uh, to get this kind of where I want it. So these are my little hand cards. Again, they were off of a shop on Etsy, if I will try to remember to link it. Um, you know, this was just, again, like not a huge financial investment to figure out if I would use something like this, if I want to use something like this, um, you know, so I'm just kind of getting a little bit on there. I'm not trying to be perfect about it. Uh, you know, I've, I've watched several videos because, you know, YouTube University all the way. And that's kind of just what people did. And mine are not curved, but I'm going to try to mimic that and just pull a little bit, pull a little bit and do that. And then switch. And again, I'm not trying to drag my teeth through each other on these. Um, I'm gonna go one more pass, although I, I only did two passes earlier. Yeah, I don't know. All right. So, and then I just take it and make like a, a little faux leg. Yeah, I think a, a technical true row leg is made by using the combs to achieve it. Uh, or the, not the combs, the cards to achieve it. Um, but I've got a fluffy little, you know, cylinder of bunny fluff. Um, and I am going to spin from the end because hopefully that will give me the, uh, 
the stuff that the feeling that I need or want. Um, keep things a little bit smoother. Let me adjust that. Right. And I don't count turtles as of yet. I'm not. I'm not about that life. Like you know, I I do this as a hobby for enjoyment. And at this point, I do not have a um, desire to really uh, get super technical about it. Um, you know, I'm sure someday I will be really pissed off that I can't get exactly what I want out of spinning stuff and then then I'll get more technical. So this is this is like spinning it's really thick and thin still and that's definitely a testament to my skill level rather than anything to do with anything else. Um, you know, I do want this to be a pretty fine um, singles because I do plan on plying it. Playing around with the idea of plying it with actually like a wool single. But again, I don't know. We'll see. Oof, that's a big old fluff. Slub, is that what they call that? I think they call that a slub. I think this is double drafting where you stop it and pull it out a little bit. So, you know, it's really thin. I don't know if this is really what we would consider structurally sound <laughs> yet. Uh, but it is considerably easier to spin after doing it with a hand card a couple times. Um, slippery stuff doesn't bother me as far as spinning, um, really. I haven't found it to be super problematic for me. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do a little little bit of a ply back here and see what we're what we're getting. Um, so there isn't it's not bad, you know, it's, it's, it's soft, you know, it's very soft. It's going to floof off after I finish it. Um, there's zero, like zero, you know, elasticity to this. Um, but I'm not upset with what I'm work, what I've got so far. I do think I'm going to try to add a little bit more twist. Probably just made a big old bundle of mess here. So let's see. Um, you know, this is the thing, like, <laughs> I don't remember seeing anybody on videos, like, screw up doing a plyback, like, how do you get it to unply <laughs> when you, when you're done? Because I don't, I don't, actually, I do have a plyback sample from my last spin on here, but that's not something that I've really done before. And I pretty much ignored it after, like, the first two ounces, so... <laughs> You know, again, like I, this is not a tutorial. I'm not showing you how to spin. I'm showing you what I'm doing and why, you know, how my experience as a new spinner is. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that up. I'm going to car, card up some more roll eggs and just keep going with this. Um, and I'll show you what I've got happening and that's just completely unwinding now. <laughs> um, I'll just show you what I've got in a little while, all right?
Hi friends. Folks, how are you doing? I'm good. Um, you will have just seen uh, several clips of me uh, when I opened my Angora fiber, when I began spinning it, a short clip of me plying it, and now I'm going to kind of just do a little wrap up. Um, not going to lie, I lost steam with this. Um, I did not really enjoy spinning the Angora. Um, my number one thought on why is because I did not actually combine it with wool as was suggested in, from several sources, videos, books, um, blogs, whatnot, all the things that I had looked into, like there is like when, when there's a piece of advice that is offered through several sources from several different areas, it's possible that might be some advice that you should take. Um, I didn't. Um, However, that being said, this is what I got. It is delightfully fluffy and halo. I mean, like, halo. <laughs> halo, halo. Um, you know, it's, it's good. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, am I totally pleased with it? No, I am not. Um, but that's, that's what happened when you're a beginner and you're playing the thing. Like, I, I didn't know what I was doing. This was a learning experience. Um, next time, and I, I will do it again. I'll just blend it with some wool next time. Uh, I did knit some of it up into a swatch. I just chose a color work. Um, and I did it with, uh, this is some Peruvian Highland wool from Knit Picks in the colorway Bittersweet that I spun up a few months ago. Um, and you can see, and I wanted to do it against a dark one so you could really see how the halo looks and stuff. The other thing you can really see is how uneven this yarn is. Um, you know, it's just, I would not be pleased. Like, there, that one looks good. I like that one. And then there's that. <laughs> uh, but, you know... I'm not mad at it. It was an experience, an experiment and an experience. Um, you know, whatever. <sighs> do I feel defeated by Angor? <laughs> In this round, um, I do not feel successful. Like, I mean, you know, this ply is barely plied there. Barely plied. Um, you know, it's, there's... I will be happy to look back on this in a year, two years, and see what I can do then um, compared to what I've done now. Um, you know, this, I'm not going to say this was fun. I don't, I don't know that I am someone that enjoys spinning uh, quote unquote luxury fibers. I don't know if I... I mean, yes, they feel nice. They're soft. They're lovely. They're wonderful. But they're, it's floppy and limp and doesn't have a whole bunch of character, uh, in my opinion. And I don't know. I don't, maybe character is not the right word. It's just, I don't, I didn't fully enjoy this. Um, as a beginner, I could have done other things, which I had mentioned that were options that I did not do, such as adding, you know, putting it, uh, blending it up with some more wool, um, various other things. I don't even know what the various other things. I mean, I could have, you know, plied this knot with itself with a wool. I could have, at one point I was so irritated <laughs> with this. <laughs> I just wanted to cut it up and, and felt it all and turn it into like naps, <laughs> which was me being very angry. And I got talked down by a friend. <laughs> so uh, my overall take on this is I'm sure it is lovely and wonderful for people who know what they're doing. For me as a beginner, it was a learning experience. And sometimes learning experiences are very frustrating and can leave a sour taste in your mouth. Um, I did not necessarily enjoy this. Uh, will I do it again? Yes. Um, what will I do with this? I don't know. Worry about it some other time. Um, 
but I don't want to discourage you as a beginner from trying it. Like, and if you are a beginner and you've tried it, let me know what you did. Let me know how it went, what you thought. If you know what, if you know what you're doing and you're not what you would consider a beginner, uh, let me know what you think, what your thoughts are. Um, you know, Angora is one of those things. It's like, until you become, uh, initiated into the world of fiber and what there is, like, you don't, as a consumer necessarily fully understand what that means um what angora means i mean first of all it can be a goat or a rabbit so there's that <laughs> um it, it's uh it was an interesting experience um i fully fully suggest that people give it a shot see what they think let me know what they think um now this angora video is uh was done with um there's several other uh channels that have done some angora uh experiments um carry craft geek carry craft geek um is doing or has done a video from the perspective of a knitter uh you know what you're looking for in an angora yarn uh you know what kind of projects and stuff that might be good for um uh, Evie of Jillian Eve uh, is <laughs> like the complete and total opposite of me in terms of uh, she knows what the hell she's talking about and can make informed, educated, good decisions about what to do with Angora. Um, and there are several others that have done their own takes on Angora yarn, fiber, spinning, weaving, um, and that sort of thing. So, you know, if you can, check them out. Uh, if you liked this video, uh, or have anything to say, if you have a comment, nice comment about my spinning <laughs> or constructive, but not mean, uh, please feel free to let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Uh, you can also find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Amanda made it, uh, FA for fiber arts. Um, and yeah, like subscribe, let me know what you thought. And I don't know. Maybe I'll do this again next year around this time for, uh, to see how things have improved. That might be interesting. That might be interesting. Like a year as a spinner working, like what changes? We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your April and, um, we will chat again soon. Okay. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.